All right, so let's derive some cost curves. We're gonna start by talking about short run cost curves. And remember that in the short run, capital is fixed, but labor varies. So we're gonna take our production function and we're gonna get short run labor demand holding constant capital. Then we'll use our labor demand function to rewrite our total cost as a function of quantity. And we'll calculate marginal cost and average total cost using that new total cost function. All right, so let's get started. Remember from last time that it's actually pretty easy to calculate labor demand when capital is constant because capital is constant, you can't do anything about it. So you don't need to do your maximization function. Um, capital is constant. So all we need to do to get labor demand is to solve for L using our production function. So since capital is constant, labor demand will just be a function of capital and output according to our production function. So if I rearrange this, I've got L to the one half equals Q over 50K to the one half. And then I'll square both sides. I get Q squared 2,500K. There we go. Notice that here, labor is not a function of wage or rent, right? The price of capital and labor, the input prices don't define labor demand. Rather, if I want to produce some quantity of output, I have to use some quantity of labor because I have no substitution possibilities between capital and labor at all. All right, so second step is to write down our total cost function, which is just the sum of all of our costs. And here, again, capital is fixed, so we just need to plug in for labor. And that's my short run total cost function. You can see that the terms here, one is fixed and one is variable. So this term has a Q in it. That's my variable cost. And this term has no Q. That's a fixed cost. Right? Of course, the cost associated with capital is fixed because capital is fixed in the short run. And then using that total cost function, we can derive our marginal cost function and our average total cost function. Marginal cost will be the derivative of the total cost function with respect to Q. So I get 2WQ over 2500K. Oops, that's not that, that's my marginal cost. And then, uh, my average total cost is take my cost function divided by quantity. So that's a bit different, but we're going to get WQ over 2500K plus RK over Q. All right. So they're not super pretty, but those are our cost functions in the short run when capital is fixed. 